So hello friends, welcome to my another video. So in this opportunity, I wanted to start talking about different parts of the Mixed Reality Toolkit or MRTK. I think that's the best way uh, we could approach uh, getting deeper into this uh, kit. Uh, I will also cover some investigation I've been doing uh, regarding augmented reality and the different frameworks that are available right now uh, in order to guide you if you are trying to uh, create a mobile application only and don't want to get uh, with uh, MRTK to do it but I still recommend MRTK anyways um, let's try to understand something before we get into the topic we are going to be discussing today so to begin uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now is the mixed reality toolkit uh, documentation the official documentation that Microsoft is providing in order to learn about the toolkit as you can see in here um, you can understand the different platforms that are supported right now OpenXR, Windows Mixed Reality, Oculus, OpenVR, uh, Ultralib and mobile devices such as iOS and Android. There are also some documentation regarding getting started, some uh, also the required software that you need in order to start working with the kit but uh, what we will be getting in deeper is in the different UX building blocks why because the getting understanding each one of them uh, is what is the for my point of view the the main thing you need to learn if you are trying to develop uh, an application with the kit so uh, the one that we are seeing today it's going to be the object manipulator so as you can see you can uh, check take a look at this in here but we will check each one of the properties we will try to play around and see what's what does this to our objects on the scene uh, physics, smoothing and other important items. So um, other thing that I wanted to point in here is that you will have the documentations uh, regarding all the different releases. So if you can see in here, you uh, this, I'm right now in the documentation of MRTK development. If you want to check the documentation of the last release, you can click on the release 253, which is the current release that is now available. And you will have the updated documentation with the corresponding changes uh, made by the team. Uh, great, so uh, let's begin. Okay, so to begin, we first will create, of course, a unit project. I already imported the MRTK uh, package. Uh, remember, I'm working with version 2.5.3. I'm working with Unity 2019 for 18 f1 And the other thing I did in here was to create my scene. I have my uh, platform as Universal Windows Platforms because I'm not planning on exporting this to anything anywhere but to test it in, in here. Um, what else? Nothing else. So in order to, um, okay, I didn't touch this part. I'm going to set it to the HoloLens 2 configuration. As you can see now, it's dark my, my scene. Okay, so in order to start working with the object manipulator, we need to first have a game object on a scene. I will, uh, I have a couple of assets. I will import an asset. I already have, uh, I have R2D2 in here. So I will import all of these so in order to uh, assign the object manipulator to uh, our 3D R2D2. Okay. So, um, let's drag this up to here. We are not seeing our Twitter because it's too big. I'm going to put it a little bit smaller, but it's too close to... Okay, it is even too big. I'm going to put it a little bit even. Much, much more smaller. Okay, so now we're seeing him in there so let's go back 
I will put him down a little bit so we can see him and a little bit far away so probably awesome okay this is my object I didn't apply as you can see only some positions um, values but I didn't add anything yet I uh, will uh, though create um, some color to it too because right now I think it's this one great now what Rito has uh, the mesh corresponding to his uh, his colors as, as in the movie guys okay so this is my my object right so now we need to add our object manipulator so what's the object manipulator is is a component to manipulate the behavior of the object in, if you have the opportunity to take some old uh, trainings regarding hololens one uh, at that moment this um, this component was called manipulator handler what's the benefit of the of applying this component basically uh, this object manipulator helps us to move a uh, scale and uh, rotate using one hand or maybe two of our hands uh, in order to manipulate the object that we want. Uh, this component also it works for HoloLens 1, HoloLens 2 and Oculus. So how do we apply the object manipulator? So I have in here, I'm first going to unpack this prefab. Um, so we have it like that and I'm going to add uh, the object manipulator great now um, as you can see I added the object manipulator but adding it also added me the constraint manager it added automatically and as you can see it says in here constraint manager is currently set to auto mode in auto mode, all constraints attached to this game object will automatically be proceeded by this manager. So now it's automatic. This uh, manager is also added when we add a bounce control, which is another component that we will see in another video. We will cover uh, the automatic and the manual uh, configuration of this component in another video because uh, it will help us modify the different behavior we want uh, to move uh, in order to move our object so let's go back to our object manipulator let's move our panel so we can take a close look of all the different parts okay so we'll take a look at it each one of the properties that our object manipulator has so uh, first we have host transform which is of course the object that we want to transform then we have the manipulation type uh, in here you have uh, the possibility to only enable the object to be manipulated by one hand it means that if you grab the object by two hands it won't have any different effect that uh, managing it only with one hand of course, the benefit of using two hands is that if you want to scale the the, the game object or the, 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 the hologram, you can um, move both of your, your hand, hands out in order to scale it out and the same to reduce, uh, to, to de if you decrease in order to reduce the size, which is a pretty cool effect if you are um, manipulating a hologram. So again, if you only would like to uh, work with one hand, uh, the two hand manipulation is going to be disabled. But if you have uh, the options two hand, you will see that the two hand manipulation enables. So uh, what it means that we have one, only one hand manipulation? It means that we have, first of all, the possibility to rotate uh, against a graph point. It means that you can rotate uh, the object by one of the of the points that you are grabbing it or if you want the object to uh, only rotate around its own uh, center then you also have the possibility you also have the possibility to do the same what's the difference between this one and the previous one the difference is that it's, uh, one it's about the near rotation and the other one is if you want to enable 
far rotation if you have for example an object that you want it to be big like a dinosaur for example then you also have uh, in the case of uh, manipulation two-handed manipulation type if you want it to be by rotation only move or only scale as i said if you want to make bigger or make smaller the, the object but you don't want by the object to rotate if you grab it by, for, by two hands you can only uh, have the scale option ro uh, enabled in here now um, I would like to show you guys uh, what's the difference with each one of the properties and how uh, R2D2 um, is being manipulated by each one of them and how it changes. So I will update the project in order to work with uh, Oculus so I can put on my Oculus and show you how it's being manipulated. Okay, so as you can see, I have R2D2. The only thing, the only component is the object manipulator, the one that is assigned to him, but I cannot grab, I cannot touch, and I cannot manipulate R2D2. And that's because we are missing some components that we need to add in order for the object manipulator to work as we wish. So let's see what we are missing. Okay, great. So uh, as you can see, the only thing that we are missing in here is the box collider. Yes, we need a box collider or any collider, a speed collider, in order for the object manipulator to work. So uh, we will grab, uh, we will add the component box collider in here. And just by adding it, the object manipulator will work uh, as we uh, expected. So let me add box collider. I will move it up because I like to keep things in order. Great. So uh, I added the box collider. I didn't touch any of the properties of the object manipulator. Let's see what we have. Okay, so now the only difference is it has a box collider. Let's see if we can grab uh, or touch or move R2D2. So I have my hands, I can point him and also I can grab him and I can move him. So, great. Yay, I can scale it. Remember that was the only option that we had. And there's one thing, I cannot grab R2D2. I cannot grab the hologram. And that's because we are missing the component that actually gives the possibility to grab the object. So I can do it with a pointer. As you can see, uh, there is this, oh, let me do it, select it again. As you can see, there is a white line that line is like a pointer that is grabbing the box collider that has the object uh, inside of it. But we are not grabbing that box collider. We are only moving it uh, through our object manipulator. We will see, so in order to grab, we would need to add what we call the near interaction, near interaction grabbable. That will give us the possibility to grab our, our game object. But I will not cover this today. I will cover it in the next video. Uh, so let's keep on watching the properties of the object manipulator. So we have the constraints, uh, we have it enabled, which is that we have the possibility that our object manipulator is linked to the constraint manager that was added automatically. We also um, have physics, as you can see physics are not enabled, that's because we are missing a rigid body component. Again, we will see that also in another video because it's a cool component. I love that component that gives us the possibility to have physics in our game object. Then we have the smoothing property, which gives us that smooth animation in when we grab the, the, the game object. We have a far and a near one. We even have the possibility to add a smoothing for the moving rotation and scale and different if it is closer to zero it's going to be much more smooth than closer to one and we also have the manipulation events which are events that you can fire whenever you need for example on started manipul on manipulation started it's when the when you grab the game object so the manipulation is started you could by dragging your uh your game object on in here you could uh, fire events you could start a sound uh, you if you click in here you will see the list of all uh, let me click in here you will see the list of all the different components that the all that this game object already has assigned so you could uh, interact with all the different events that are assigned to those components 
and you also have the on over uh, enter event that is when you are um, on over the uh, game object or on over ex exceeded and then we have the elastic as it's as you can see this in an experimental state so i won't add it because i don't know what's going to happen with that uh, property in the future but that's it for the object manipulator there is one last thing that i would like to cover and is um disabling the the smoothing on our object manipulator so you guys can see what's the difference uh, between having it i will also put these numbers on top okay great um to see what makes that anim that smoothness in our project let's check it out Right, as a final demo then, I, I just took away the smoothness. Uh, as you can see, when I grab R2D2, it doesn't animate that smooth, uh, that natural. So, uh, which is why it, it is enabled at the beginning of the, of when it is assigned. Uh, my suggestion is that you keep it that way because it doesn't look that natural if you don't. And okay, great. So I think that we covered most of the things that I wanted to cover with Ocean Manipulator. So I will see you in the next uh, video or two. Uh, that's it for today, guys. I hope it was a nice uh, video about Object Manipulator for you all. I would like to know how are your testing going. If you had any problems, uh, you can contact me through my social media or in the comment area of this video. So I will upload more videos during the week and the next following weeks in order to cover most of the components of a Marty game. Thank you and bye bye.